Hi everyone. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really do appreciate the support. Thank you guys for commenting on my videos and sharing and subscribing if it resonates with you. Let's get right into it. Please keep in mind that I do channel multiple energy groups on here. Uh, sometimes I channel smaller energy groups, sometimes larger energy groups, so only take it if it resonates. Don't try to force it to fit. What's the story for someone out there? What do you need to know right now? Four of Cups, Eight of Wands, Three of Pentacles. Justice. So I feel like this person rejected you and now they're wanting to give this a second chance. They want to build with you and they see it as divine justice. Tell me more about this. Oh, this is somebody that wants what they can't have. This is somebody that likes the chase. This person might be very insecure. Maybe they're used to going for men or going for women that are kind of crazy, uh, dramatic, toxic, emotionally unavailable. And I feel like in the past, it's like you were none of those things. You were actually very invested in this person. And I feel like this person wants you now that they can't have you. It's like you're rejecting them with the Four of Cups here. It's like you're you're not looking at this offer anymore. The tables have turned, basically. I think it used to be the other way around, where they didn't see your worth. They didn't... I don't want to say they didn't have an interest in you, but I almost felt like they saw you as too... It was too easy or too simple, too good to be true. They weren't used to that. They wanted something more complicated. They like things... This person... Um, I mean, this person has an ego, but I also feel like... It's strange. It's like they have an ego, but they're also insecure. And I just feel like they like danger. They like adventure. They like... If something's too easy, if something's too simple, they just... They assume it's too good to be true. They they look for problems. So I feel like they self-sabotage a lot. They're very self-destructive. Um, they go after people that are just not good for them or people that just don't want them. And so I think in the past, it's like you were trying to support them. You were trying to sh give them your love. You were trying to offer them this cup and they just weren't seeing it. They were, maybe there was even third parties. They might have even been interested in other people, other women, other men. And I think the tables have turned now and they're the one that's in this, in this energy of, you know, being rejected. I feel like it, it's it's like a game to them. It's like the forbidden fruit must be tasted kind of energy that I'm picking up. It's like now that you're not giving them the time of day, you're the queen of wands. You're in your power, glowing up. You're focusing on yourself, prioritizing self-care. You're not really fixated on this person anymore. And that's making them really want you. I, f I feel like you're focused on, you're dating other people, you're just focused on yourself, you're just, whatever it is, you're just not paying attention to them anymore. You might have even done a cut and clear spell on them for some of you. Uh, I feel, they, they can just feel the energy shift. They feel like they don't really have you like they used to. And that is driving them to want to come forward quickly and offer you something and build something with you. They feel like, tell me about the justice card of the moon card. Because it's, it's like they feel like this is divine justice to build something with you. But why is it hidden? Why do they want to hide that? Their image. Let's see. I think this person feels like this is destiny. They feel like they're meant to build something with you. They're meant to have something solid and stable with you. I think what they're hiding is the fact that they actually do believe in this connection, that they actually are the King of Cups. They actually do have faith in this connection now. I think they're almost, how do I explain this? 
it's it's almost like they're tuning into these emotions, but they don't want to admit that they're tuning into them. Like, I think they've finally started admitting it to them. Oops, sorry. I think they've finally started admitting it to themselves, but they're not wanting to say it. I think they're almost afraid. This person might actually be superstitious. This person might actually have a fear that they're going to jinx it. I just, I, I get this really strange kind of, um, like almost like a shock. Like I see like this look of shock on this person's face. It's like they're having these epiphanies, but they don't want to say them out loud. It, it's like this person feels like it's justice, like it's destiny, like soulmates or twin flames. Like, like this is a spiritually led connection. Like you guys are meant to be together. Um, and I think that they've finally kind of recognized that and they've embraced that, but they're like, there's something about like jinxing it. Like they're afraid that if they say it out loud, that it's going to, they're going to end up sabotaging it. Or they're afraid that, that for some reason they're keeping that knowledge to themselves. They're keeping, it's like they have faith in this connection, but they're, they're keeping it to themselves. I think this person's very pessimistic too. So they might be afraid that if they say it out loud, that it's like, it's like they see you as their happiness, but they're, and they've finally admitted that to themselves, but there's just something, it's so strange, but it's like, there's something about verbalizing it. Like, even though it's in their mind, maybe they might even write about it in a journal or something, but they, it's like, they can't speak it. They feel like they can't say those words. Um, they feel like it's like they're thankful for this connection, but they feel like if they thank their spirit guides or if they let themselves be too happy or express too much happiness, then everything's just going to fall apart. That's that's their kind of pessimistic way of thinking. Um, but you, I mean, you saw this relationship. And no matter how much love you have for this person, I think you saw this as like a burden at some point. Ten of Wands is like the straw that broke the camel's back. Like you could just not handle anymore mentally, emotionally, whatever it was. It's like you just could not take anymore. You felt like like mentally this person really just did a number on you. And now they're wanting to build eight of pentacles. It's like now that you, you, you know, you stopped carrying the weight for them. And now they're the one that's wanting to to build something here. They're wanting to come back around. Page of, yeah, and offer you something. Page of cups. Tell me more about this. They see you as someone who's trying to be strong right now. They see that you're single, you're independent. You might even be juggling your options right now. They feel like it's going to, to take more energy and effort to convince you that being single isn't the best option for you. Yeah, they want to have a transformation here. I mean, I do feel like there is love here. Like, this person does... It's like this person does have genuine feelings for you, I feel. But it, at the same time, it's like they also just love the chase. They love, it's like they want what they can't have. Because when they did have you, like I was saying, it's like they felt like it was too easy. It was too simple. It wasn't familiar to them. It wasn't in their comfort zone. So they chased other people that they chased, you know, women that were emotionally unavailable, dangerous, risky, shallow, like, like when they have blessings, I feel like they can't just accept them. They always have to cause problems. They always have to sabotage and self-destruct. So, I mean, I feel like the epiphanies are genuine. Like, they really are looking back and recognizing what they had with you. But they're looking back because of your absence. Because they're being, you know, pushed to have to look at things now. But I, I don't know. It's like, what happens when this person catches you, though? Are they just going to go right back to self? Well, let's ask that question. What happens when they catch you, though? Are they just going to go right back to self-sabotage and taking you for granted? Page of Swords. Two of Wands. And the Tower. Hmm... Tell me about the two of wands, the tower, and the three of cups. 
Two of Wands is someone. It's like someone's like w like making long term plans here. Okay, there could be for some, not for all of you, but there could be someone from their childhood and ex that they still have ties to. I see them wanting to. I see them wanting to change. Tell me more about this. I feel like for some of them, an ex might come back around and they might have a hard time resisting it. They might have an ex from their past and their ex might come back around saying, hey, I want to heal things. I want to fix this. I know I didn't treat you right, but I want to fix things. Or this could even be you having another ex come back around and you might be the one to... Because there's some kind of third party situation here that causes a tower. Tell me more about this. Oops, sorry. So I don't think it's going to go anywhere with this. Is it going to go anywhere with this ex? Is it going to go anywhere with this ex? Hmm. Bear with me, guys. Hold on. There's like a story that's being told here. Give me a second. I don't think so. The thing is, though, I think at first... I think this is someone that, he, that you know, your person was very, very close to this person. And so I think that your person might get caught up at first. They might get caught up in all the emotions, the chemistry with this person... Um, and then it's going to be the same shit as before, but it might be too late for your connection because they're already, they might have already chosen this person over you or they might have already just, you know, gone ahead and cheated on, on you with this person, unfortunately. And this isn't for everyone, this part of the story, but this is just what I'm seeing for a few of you. Only take it if it resonates. Um, it's just kind of like a side story for some of you. But yeah, I see it's, it's like this person's going to be, this person has a hold on them. This person's very glamorous, very seductive. This person might even be competitive with you. Like she might even see, he or she might even see the two of you together and just want to be like, to, like, like she doesn't want to see the him with anybody else, male or female, you know, take it as it resonates. She might want to almost like prove to herself like, oh, I can get him back. And I think they're going to be in the honeymoon phase for at first. Like, there's there's a lot of, like, you know, the Empress, the Four of Wands, Ace of Wands, Ace of Pentacles. We have all these cards talking about, like, passion and a new start. And the Empress is very, you know, very charming, very beautiful, uh, very, you know, nurturing, motherly, seductive. I'm seeing her as very seductive, at least in this context here. But I, I feel like it's it's... They're going to have the same problems as before. It's like, I feel like he's going to get wrapped up in it and he's not going to think clearly and he might make it, he might make it an impulsive decision. This is just potential future energy. I'm sorry to put this out there. I know you guys probably don't want to hear it. Um, they're going to start having the same old problems as before and he's going to have anxiety about it, insomnia, sleepless nights. Like they're going to be, they're both, the first month or so, they're both going to be super excited. It's like, oh, we're soulmates, we're back together, everything's good. Um, and then the same old issues are going to come back in. And he's going to try to balance it out, but eventually he's going to have to have a new perspective and there's just, there's going to be conflict it's just like the honeymoon phase. It's just, it's going to be the honeymoon phase and then there's going to be the same old conflict, same issues, and they're going to break up again. But, um, uh, I hate giving this message because it, it's such, I know, I know it's such a contradictory energy because it's like, I do see the desire to change for you. I do see the love there for you. I almost feel like, like the, the potential path that I see ahead is, it's almost like this person coming back to you because, 
you know, like I said, it's like they've lost you. You're not in their energy field anymore. You're pulling away from them. They're recognizing what they had with you. They're regretting. They're regretting letting it go. I just, I think this person needs more, like they need counseling and they need some kind of mental help because it just, it almost feels like they're going to really try to win you back. But then once they have you back, I don't want to, I don't want to use the word bored, but it's, it's like, they're going to, oh, I, I feel like you guys would get back together and it's like, they're going to be thinking about the long term. Like, how do I stay stable? How do I not go off and chase other things? How do I just stay where I'm at and have a stable, healthy relationship? How do I have a strong romantic relationship based on a friendship too? How do I just sit still and not always have to sabotage and self-destruct and chase other things? And I really feel like this person genuinely is going to make that effort for you. Like I really do feel that sense of them, you know, thinking long term with you and really, you know, trying to, to do right by you. But unfortunately, without proper, you know, mentorship, guidance, counseling, I feel like this person might end up failing again because I think that they're going to they're going to fall back into old patterns. It's honestly, I'm sorry to say it, but that's what I'm seeing here. Um, I feel like the desire, like I said, the desire is there to do right by you. The desire to make that effort to change, to be stable for you, it's there. But it, it's like they're I'm hearing like fighting a losing battle. It, it's it's like because they're gonna be do they're gonna be trying to make those efforts on their own. They're gonna be stubborn and trying to do it alone. Like I'm gonna try to be healthy and stable for for her. I'm gonna try to stay in this relationship. I'm gonna try to be loyal for a change. Um, but it's not familiar to them. You know, without that without that extra support, without that mental help, it's like I feel like they don't know what they're doing. You know. It's good that the desire to change is there. That's the most important part. But but if they don't have, you know, a counselor or someone that's actually helping them and, and teaching them and showing them how to make those long-term changes, I feel like it's kind of inevitable. Eventually this person, you know, gets kind of bored or they it, it becomes too familiar. They don't know what they're doing and they fall back to old patterns. And I think that this ex of theirs is going to see that. They're going to see that chance. They're going to see that it's it's almost I don't know it's almost like a game to this ex and I feel like she's going to seduce him honestly and 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 if he doesn't have the proper support it does look like there's a good chance that he's going to allow himself to be seduced because it's like it, it's it's like it's too familiar with you it's not it's not that he's it's not that he doesn't love you it's it's almost like it's just too it's too out of his comfort zone like it's too uncomfortable he doesn't know what to do with it he doesn't know what to do with his feelings with um with the energy with the connection between the two of you he's like well like it's just it's so normal it's so healthy and he's like what do I do with this like what like where do I go what, what's next in my life what like he needs something to chase he needs something to put all his energy into um, and so, yeah, she's going to come around. And even if they were together for a long time, I feel like it's going to be like the, the shiny new toy. It's something new. It's something, it, it, it's like a, a get off the hook or like a, you know, get out of jail free car when she comes around because it, he has like a chance to just sabotage everything with you instead of just sitting with those uncomfortable feelings and learning how to have a healthy, stable relationship. I just, I just feel it like he's you know, most likely going to run back to and, and make a huge mistake here with this woman. And he's going to think they have something special and it's, it's they're you know, it's great, but it's, it, it's going it, to, yeah, like I said, it's going to be the same shit with her as before. But I think by then it's going to be too late with you because you're not going to give it another chance after that if he cheats on you. For some, this could be a warning too, just to like, I don't know, like, you know, this doesn't have to happen. I mean, this is psychics. So any psychic that like tells you like, oh, I know for sure you're going to meet this person on this day is full of shit. Like a lot of psychics that, that say that they're just trying to get money out of you. The truth is like as psychics, I'm tuning into the energy. So I'm tuning into this for this group. I'm tuning into your, your person's, you know, their thoughts, their feelings, their emotions. Um, and what's most likely to happen based on that. So this is what I'm most likely feeling. I mean, that yes, this could change, but I think there is a chance here to get off that path and 
Um, I mean, th this is a heads up. This is something to be aware of. This other woman, you know, maybe she needs to be blocked. Maybe she's jealous of you and she wants to, to cause issues for you. She wants to prove that she's as good as you. Maybe this is a heads up for you to watch your back. Um, and also just a heads up for him that he's going to need counseling if he's going to, he can try his hardest to, to have a healthy, stable relationship with you all he wants. And that the desire is there. His heart really is in it. But if he doesn't have, like I said, if he doesn't have that help, there's only so far he can go before it's just too unfamiliar, too uncomfortable. And he feels, you know, like he just wants to slide back into his comfort zone. Let's wrap this reading up. Any final messages? Yeah, he's just so addicted to toxic relationships. I mean, deep down, his soul really does want peace. His soul wants peace and stability and happiness, but it's like his mind, his childhood, his upbringing, whatever it is he went through, it's like mentally he's addicted to drama, to adventure, to toxic relationships, to, uh, to chaos, to... You know, having to chase, to always having to fight for something. I think another issue with this man is maybe he needs something in his life that he's more passionate about. Like, I just, because I, I sense with you, it's almost like, like, I feel like you guys would get to a point where you really would have a stable, healthy relationship. But then he's like, he doesn't know who he is when he has a stable relationship with someone. Does that make sense? It's almost like, he's like, well, what do I do next? Like, where do I go from here? It's like, I think that's. I think putting all his energy into these emotionally unavailable or dramatic women, I think it makes it so he doesn't have to focus on himself. It's like he's able to just chase and chase and chase. It's like that's his like purpose. That's his drive. That's his passion. You know, and I think the thing is he needs that. I, I don't think I don't know if he doesn't have hobbies or he doesn't have a good career or maybe it's a mix of both. But I just feel like this person doesn't have a lot of things in their life that they're um, like passionate about that really, it's like, they don't feel like they have a purpose. They don't feel like they have a drive. They don't feel like they have things in their life that they're passionate about. And so that comes out in all their relationships where it's like, you know, it's, it's almost like he loses himself if he has a healthy, stable relationship with you because he's, then he's like, well, things are normal. Like, what do I, I have nothing to chase. I have nothing to fight for. I have nothing like, what do I do with myself? It, it's like, he's going to be confused it's like his sense of identity is going to come into question, if that makes sense. But anyway, that's what I have for you. So maybe this can be a heads up for someone on what to look out for. I'm going to put this out. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I always do private readings. I don't always mention it, but I, but you know, just email me if you want one. My email is dragonenchantress at awol.com, and that's right below in the description box. And I really appreciate your comments, liking the video, sharing, subscribing, um, Thank you guys so much for helping me get back in the YouTube algorithm.